Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to look at how to analyze other types of categorical uh, data, uh, which can be represented like this in the following, called a picture graph or a pictograph, right? So a picture graph or a pictograph. And so let's take a look at the first one. <clears throat> it says, some students at their own school signed a petition asking for a reading area for recess. The graph below shows the number of signatures from each grade. So each of these pictures right, represents two signatures. So we see that um, from the first grade we have three pictures. So that's really three times two is six. There are six signatures. From the second grade we have again two times two is four, four signatures. Third grade we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 8 times 2 is 16. And then here on the fourth grade, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 times 2 is 14, right? Now, the reason why they made, the reason why that each picture could represent two signatures, of course, is if each picture only represented one, then you would have to have double the number of pictures, correct? Thus creating a bigger graph. So by doing two per picture, you're actually making the graph um, smaller and more compact, correct? All right, so, but you always have to look at the legend to see what each picture represents. So always look at the legend before you actually um, uh, try to analyze it. If someone didn't look at this, then they could assume that each picture only represents one signature. All right, so let's take a look at the question. How many total signatures are on the petition? So then now we have to just count all of them up and then just multiply by two, right? So we have, we had five here. Uh, we had one, two, three, four. We had eight here. So five and eight is 13. And then we had seven here. So that's a total of 20. So 20 times two is 40, right? So it looks like we have a total of 40 signatures uh, in this problem, okay? Let's take a look at another one. Here, Olivia uh, counted the number of ladybugs on each plant in her garden, then made the graph. Again, each ladybug represents, uh, each picture represents five ladybugs. And the question is, if 10 ladybugs fly from the lettuce to the alfalfa, uh, which two kinds of plants will have the same number of ladybugs? If 10? 10 ladybugs fly from the lettuce to the alfalfa. So they're going from here to here, 10, right? So here, um, so, so imagine, let me just see if I can write something here. All right, All right. so they're saying if 10 ladybugs fly from the lettuce to the alfalfa, each ladybug represents five. So we're saying if we take two of these, okay, kind of, sort of, there is a lot of lag, and they're gonna be moved over here to the alfalfa. So therefore, it's gonna create one, two more ladybugs, correct? Two more pictures. And then this is only gonna have one ladybug. Well, it's clear that then the number, the alfalfa and the roses are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven times five is 35. So the roses and alfalfa are going to end up having 35 lady, ladybugs each, right? So let's check that. Roses and alfalfa. Roses and the alfalfa. Okay. Here. Um, we have Ruby had a budget of up to $75 to spend. Uh, Ruby made a graph of the cost of the item she bought, and each tag represents $5. So these are the types of purchases that Ruby made, and each tag, again, represents $5. How much money did Ruby have left from her budget? So she had up to $75 in her budget to spend. And that's how much she spent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So of course 13 times 5 is 65, right? So it looks like she has $10 left, right? So let's check. And that's correct. And let's do one more. Here, Mandy's science class counted the bones in an owl pellet. Um, so we have each bone represents, each bone picture represents two bones. And these are the types of bones. We have a skull, jaw, leg, rib, and shoulder, right? And the number of bones. How many more bo more rib bones were there than the skull and jaw bones combined? So how many more rib bones were there uh, more than the skull and the jaw? Skull and the jaw combined. Well, there were none. There were none for the jaw, right? There were two bones. There were two bones for the skull, and there were two for six. Six rib bones. So it looks like there's going to be four more, right? Six minus two is four. So let's put that in. And that is correct. Okay. Now um, let's let's go on to the next type, which is creating bar graphs. Okay. Okay, so we are back. Um, this particular problem set deals with um, creating a bar graph. Okay, so let's read it. It says, uh, Mega created a chart and a bar graph with a number of visitors in each section of the museum during one hour. All right, so Mega created a chart here and the bar graph, which is down here. All right, with a number of visitors in each section of the museum during one hour. So, here are the different sections that are represented um, and the number of visitors in each of those sections. So all we have to do now is label each bar on the bar graph accordingly. All right, so here they are. So it looks like the first bar had about 90 visitors. So it looks like that's the invention convention. Invention convention. Uh, the second one has about 80, which refers to the waterworks. Third one had about 60, which would be the echo station. The fourth one looks like it's around 70, so that would probably be around the world. And then the last one is the most. It's about 110. So that is going to be the history theater. Okay. And that is correct. Okay, guys. So you basically have to transfer the, um, the chart, the table, into a bar graph situation. Okay, into the bar graph. Um, we're going to do one more. So I think everyone kind of has an idea of how to do these. All right. So here again, we got to transfer the chart into the bar graph. Here it says the public library gives a book store gift certificate as a prize to the student who reads the most books over summer vacation. Create a bar graph to show how many books each student read. So here are our students. And here is here is the bar graph that um, basically relates to that chart. So we'll start with Beatrice. Beatrice, who had six. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab the bar and just push it up. Okay. Grab it. In other words, click and hold and then push it up to six and let go. How about Matus? Matus, we're at 14. So grab and hold all the way up to 14. All right, Matus, you are famous. Uh, Lucia. 
although your name is not spelled the same, right? Lucia has 18, all the way up to 18, and then Gabriel. Gabriel has 10, so we'll push it up to 10 like that. All right, and we'll check. Okay, guys, looks good. Um, let's just take a look at one more, just so that we've hit every type. Um, this is the same as the second one we've done, so I'm just going to forego this because I think everyone has a pretty good idea of how to do these. And I'm going to move on to the next type, next problem set, which deals with uh, reading the bar graphs. Okay, how to read bar graphs, two-step problems. All right, and let's take a look at what those look like. Okay, here it says, the graph shows how long it takes a group of students to walk to school. So here are one, two, three, four, five students, and how many minutes it takes them to walk to school. Here, then it says, Carol moved to a new home, and her walk is 28 minutes less than it was on the graph. So here's Carol. Carol, it took Carol 35 minutes to walk to school, but then she moved, so now it only um, now her walk is 28 minutes less than 35. So now it only takes Carol, it's 35. Sorry, Let's just do this. Actually, let me do this. Let's be consistent. So it used to take her 35 minutes. It used to take her 35 minutes, but now it takes her 28 minutes less. So now it only takes her seven minutes to walk to school. Okay, so now she has a pretty short walk. And the question it's asking is, who will spend the same number of minutes walking to school as Carol? Well, who else it takes only seven minutes? It's clear that Emma only takes seven minutes. So now Carol, it takes Carol the same number of minutes to walk to school as Emma, right? So we are looking at Emma now. Okay guys, uh, let's do one more, or maybe two, one or two more. It says the graph shows the number of alligators in each place. So here are the four different places where alligators reside. How many fewer alligators are in Bite Swamp than in Chomp Lake and Reptile Creek combined? So let's see. How many total are there in Chomp Lake and Reptile Creek? Here's Chomp Lake. Here's Chomp Lake. And here is Reptile Creek. It looks like Reptile Creek has probably around 10. That looks like it's about 10. And Chomp Lake, it looks like there's about 6. So total, um, these two have about 16, correct? And here in Bite Swamp, it looks like there's 12. So in Bite Swamp, there's 12. So how many fewer alligators are in Bite Swamp than these combined? Well, definitely we see the difference is four here. So I think our answer is going to be four. Okay. And let's do one more. Uh, Alice graphed how many books in the school library are about her favorite subjects. Here's the number of books, type of books. Alice has read 10 of these books. How many books about Alice's favorite subjects that she has not read are in her school library? So basically, she has read 10, and now you just got to count all these up and then subtract the 10, right? So here, let's see if we can do this quickly. This looks like it's about 25. Uh, this looks like it's probably around uh, 15. Okay, this is 30. And this is 40. So if you add them all up, this is what? 40, 40 is 80, and 30 is 110. And it says she's read 10 of these. So I guess she still has a hundred more to go. Okay, so let's type it in, check it, and that is correct. Okay, guys? All right, take care.